In part 4 we will look at the rigor splice. This splice has the same marrying tucks as the sailmaker splice, which we'll look at later, but it is completed with an over and under tuck as in the sailor splice. Because the initial tucks are backing rather than going forward, the uh, eye itself tends to be more circular in, in section. And for this reason, it's a good choice for making uh, a splice around round thimbles or maybe when wanting to make a tight splice around a circular object like a pole. But because the strands experience sharp bending in the throat, it benefits from being strengthened with seizing. The instructions for the initial tucks are usually shown with the bite of the eye being formed on the opposite side of the uh, standing part. Think of the eye as being seen from the, from the bottom. The reason in the case of the rigor's eye anyway is that when shown this way, the tucking pattern is much simpler. Here's the tucking pattern seen from, you might call it the bottom or if the uh, bite is formed on the left. You can see the trailing uh, strand goes under two, chosen strand goes under one, and the leading strand goes under one in a simple pattern. If we look at the marrying from the top side, we see it's a little more confusing. The leading strand is tucked under the trailing strand, uh, and then the trailing strand is tucked under two strands, and the chosen strand is crosses over the trailing strand and is tucked under two strands. We prepare our rope as we've done before, and then we'll make our eye with the working part on the left side of the standing part. Uh, let's say we want to put a rebote there, so we'll, we'll make this our our target strand. Now when we lay out the strands to get in a position to get married, it's in a slightly different order, but it's very simple. We take the trailing strand, and then the chosen strand, and then the leading strand in that order. So it looks like this coming off of the rope. Now we'll take the trailing strand and we'll tuck it under two strands, the target strand and the aft strand. So that's right here. It's important to tighten this up early on and it's because of the three-dimensional nature of the rope the uh, trailing strand tends to take a nosedive into the table and if you get it tight that sort of sets the other strands in their correct position for their their tuck. So now we've, we can take our chosen strand and we'll go ahead and tuck it under the target strand. And in this case, we don't have to flip the, the eye over. We'll go ahead and take the, the leading strand and we tuck it under the forward strand. That's this one right here. Now we can tighten them all up. You can see how the throat of the eye is quite open. The sailmaker's eye and the rigger's eye are identical up to this point. If you're intending to make the sailmaker's eye, you can go on to the, that appropriate video. If not, we'll work on the, finishing the rigger's eye. This is the most uh, confusing part of the rigger's eye is making the initial over and under tuck. Because we're, we've put this, the uh, working strands in more or less backhanded, the first tuck we have to spiral the strand around 
the standing part strand to start the first tuck. And it's easiest to keep things in order and avoid confusion if we, we start with the leading strand and what we'll do is unroll a little bit and flatten it out and, and go right around the forward strand as if we were going to spiral and then we'll start our tuck. Now we can take our chosen strand and it's obvious the over and under tuck pattern. So we can see we have to tuck under this one. We're sort of spiraling around the target strand and we're going to go under the forward strand. And then the, the uh, trailing strand, uh, since we, we can see this is the only one that's available. So we'll wrap around this one under and because it was so far after we started we'll go ahead and make two tucks with this one to sort of catch up. Then we can tighten everything up. Okay, I'll finish the remaining tucks off screen. Well, I finished the tucks on the splice. Here's another way you can finish off the strands. Just put some whipping on them and then cut them just far enough back so that the, the uh, end of the strands can fray and make a little nubbin so that the whipping won't come off. That works pretty good.